Hello everyone, thanks so much for joining us today for our chapter book story time here at the Caribou Public Library. I'm Miss Erin and I'm so glad that you're here with us again today. We're going to be continuing to read Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll and today we're on the second half of chapter eight. Um, we stopped right as the Queen of Hearts was asking um, Alice if she knew how to play croquet and invited her to play with him. All right, so we're gonna see what happens next, which is exactly what Alice wants to know. Come on then, roared the queen. And Alice joined the procession, wondering very much what would happen next. It's, it's a very fine day, said a timid voice at her side. She was walking by the white rabbit, who was peeping anxiously into her face. Very, said Alice. Where's the duchess? Hush, hush, said the rabbit in a low, hurried tone. He looked anxiously over his shoulder as he spoke, and then raised himself upon tiptoe, put his mouth close to her ear, and whispered, She's under a sentence of execution. What for? said Alice. Did you say what a pity? the rabbit asked. No, I didn't, said Alice. I don't think it's at all a pity. I said, what for? She boxed the queen's ears, the rabbit began. Alice gave a little scream of laughter. Oh, hush, the rabbit whispered in a frightened tone. The queen will hear you. You see, she came rather late, and the queen said, Get to your places, shouted the queen in a voice of thunder, and people began running about in all directions, tumbling up against each other. However, they got saddled down in a minute or two, and the game began. There's a picture of Alice listening to the rabbit who is whispering to her. Alice thought she had never seen such a curious croquet ground in her life. It was all ridges and furrows. The croquet balls were live hedgehogs and the mallets live flamingos. And the soldiers had to double themselves up and stand on their hands and feet to make arches. <laughs> Here is a picture of the croquet grounds. Look at this. The flamingos are used as the mallets. The card soldiers bend over to become arches that they're supposed to hit the hedgehogs through. <laughs> the chief difficulty Alice found at first was in managing her flamingo. She succeeded in getting its body tucked away comfortably enough under her arm with its legs hanging down, but generally, just as she had got its neck nicely straightened out and was going to give the hedgehog a blow with its head, it would twist itself around and look up in her face with such a puzzled expression that she could not help bursting out laughing. And when she got its head down and she was going to begin again, it was very provoking to find that the hedgehog had unrolled itself and was in the act of crawling away. <laughs> Here is a picture of Alice with the flamingo looking up at her and the hedgehog crawling away. Oh dear. <clears throat> Besides all this, there was generally a ridge or a furrow in the way wherever she wanted to send the hedgehog to, and as the doubled up soldiers were always getting up and walking off to other parts of the ground, Alice soon came to the conclusion that it was a very difficult game indeed. The players all played at once, without waiting for turns, quarreling all the while and fighting for the hedgehogs, and in a very short time the queen was in a furious passion and went stamping about and shouting, off with his head! or off with her head about once in a minute alice began to feel very uneasy to be sure she had not as yet had any dispute with the queen but she knew that it might happen at any minute and then thought she what would become of me they're dreadfully fond of beheading people here the great wonder is that there's any one left alive she was looking about for some easy way of escape and wondering whether she could get away without being seen when she noticed a curious appearance in the air. It puzzled her very much at first, but after watching it a minute or two, she made it out to be a grin. And she had then she said to herself, it's the Cheshire Cat. Now I shall have somebody to talk to. How are you getting on? said the cat, as soon as there was mouth enough for it to speak with. Alice waited till the eyes appeared and then nodded. It's no use speaking to it, she thought, till its ears have come or at least one of them, because it wouldn't be able to hear her, right? <laughs> the cat seemed to think that there was enough of it now in sight, and no more of it appeared. 
Oh, excuse me, until its ears had appeared. In another minute, the whole head appeared. And then Alice put down her flamingo and began an account of the game, feeling very glad that she had someone to listen to her. The cat seemed to think that there was enough of it now in sight and no more of it appeared. So just its head. I don't think they play at all fairly, Alice began in rather complaining tone. They all quarrel so dreadfully one can't hear oneself speak. They don't seem to have any rules in particular. At least, if there are, nobody attends to them. And you've no idea how confusing it all is it is all the things being alive. For instance, there's the arch. I've got to go through next, walking about at the other end of the ground. And I should have croqueted the queen's hedgehog just now, only it ran away when it saw mine coming. How do you like the queen? said the cat in a low voice. Not at all, said Alice. She's so extremely... Just then she noticed that the queen was close behind her listening, and so she went on, likely to win, that it's hardly worth while finishing the game. The queen smiled and pressed on. Who are you talking to? said the king, coming up to Alice and looking at the cat's head with great curiosity. Here is a picture of just the cat's head in the sky, the king with Alice. Hmm. It's a friend of mine, a Cheshire cat, said Alice. Allow me to introduce it. Don't like the look of it at all, said the king. However, it may kiss my hand if it likes. I'd rather not, the cat remarked. Don't be impertinent, said the king, and don't look at me like that. He got behind Alice as he spoke. A cat may look at a king, said Alice. I've read that in some book, but I don't remember where. Well, it must be removed, said the king very decidedly, and he called to the queen, who was passing at the moment. My dear, I wish you would have this cat removed. The queen had only one way of settling all difficulties, great or small. Guess what she said? Off with his head, she said, without even looking around. I'll fetch the executioner myself, said the king eagerly, and he hurried off. Alice thought she might as well go back and see how the game was going on as she heard the queen's voice in the distance, screaming with passion. She had already heard her sentence, three of the players to be executed for having missed their turns, and she did not like the look of things at all, as the game was in such confusion that she never knew whether it was her turn or not. So she went in search of her hedgehog. The hedgehog was engaged in a fight with another hedgehog, which seemed to Alice an excellent opportunity for croquetting one of them with the other. The only difficulty was that her flamingo was gone across to the other side of the garden where Alice could see it trying in a helpless sort of way to fly up into a tree. By the time she'd caught the flamingo and brought it back over, the fight was over and both the hedgehogs were out of sight. But it doesn't matter much, thought Alice, as all the arches are gone from this side of the ground. So she tucked it away under her arm that it might not escape again and went back to have a little more conversation with her friend. When she got back to the Cheshire Cat, she was surprised to find quite a large crowd collected round it. There was a dispute going on between the executioner, the king, and the queen, who were all talking at once, while all the rest were quite silent and looked very uncomfortable. The moment Alice appeared, she was appealed, appealed to by all three to settle the question, and they repeated their arguments to her, though, as they spoke all at once, she found it very hard to make out exactly what they said. The executioner's argument was that you couldn't cut off a head unless there was a body to cut it off from, that he had never had to do such a thing before, and he wasn't going to begin at his, at his time of life. <laughs> the king's argument was that anything that had a head could be beheaded and that you weren't to talk nonsense. The queen's argument was that if something wasn't done about it in less than no time, she'd have everybody executed all around. It was this last remark that had made the whole party look so grave and anxious. Alice could think of nothing else to say, but it belongs to the Duchess. You better ask her about it. She's in prison, the Queen said to the executioner. Fetch her here. And the executioner went off like an arrow. <laughs> the cat's head began fading away the moment he was gone, and by the time he had come back with the Duchess, it had entirely disappeared. So the king and the executioner ran wildly up and down looking for it, while the rest of the party went back to the game. Well, that's it for chapter eight today. Here's a picture of the executioner and the king looking around for the Cheshire cat. 
Well, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and we shall see you back again next time. Bye for now.